save bread making today. We're going to give it a bit of time for everyone to log on. Um, so we'll see who turns up today. Uh, but if you're here with us now, say hi. We'll say hi back. I've got Max with me today. Hi. Hope you all had a good bee day. I we did. Hello from Becky Smith. Hello, Becky. <laughs> got the uh, kids food for you today. Hopefully, James and Isabella are baking along. Say hello. Hi. Got hi from Sarah, Elliot, Chris, hi. Louise from Chertsey. Yeah, we need to know where people are from today as well. Who can get the furthest? Who's the furthest away from us in Hampshire? I think Amma and Pom Pom are going to join in today. Hopefully. We'll have to find out. Yep. Are they here? Mm -hmm. Oh, Amma and Pom Pom are joining Yay. in. Say hi, Amma. Hi, hi Amma. Hi, Pom Pom. <laughs> <laughs> so, Denise, Louise, Frida, Annette from Whitstable. Lovely. Bogdan's on. Max is going to be doing a lot of the baking for me today because I've actually made so many scones I've hurt my wrist. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, not use it so much because it keeps twinging and uh, Max is going to do the, the muscle work, aren't you? Yeah. Right, so we've got Hannah from Coventry, Barney from Warwickshire, Sarah from Newcastle, oh, Kay good. from Hailing Island, Hi, Shannon from Wales, Chris oh, in Gillingham, Kent. Susan, first time following from Nottinghamshire. Oh, nice to have you with us. Sarah's in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. I like Cornwall. Helen's got Imogen and Bethany and looking forward to making bread for the first time. Oh, excellent. Sandy from Edinburgh. Denise Tunbridge nice Wells. Cornwall, isn't it? Frida's from Ayrshire. Oh, nice to have you with us. I know a lot of people have been doing the scone workshop again. Uh, that we've we've kept all the videos um, saved on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel that Max has now created. Um, so uh, I know that that's been revisited quite a bit recently. So hopefully, if it is your first time, uh, if you want to have a go at any of our other workshops, we have what have we got, Max? Um, um, what did you biscuit, put? On? Biscuit, biscuit, scone, and pizza. Yeah, and they're all. If uh, if you can't find them on our Facebook page, you can find it on our Boozy Baker YouTube channel. And Max is uploading. He's learning as he goes, yeah. uh, but they're all uploaded there, aren't they? Nice and yeah. neatly for you. So do head over there a bit later and subscribe for him. He'll be a very happy boy. Uh, we've also got Susan, first timer in Fife. Oh, nice to have you here. We've got Melanie from Cumbria. We've got Trish from Derbyshire. Angela from Oxfordshire doing first time. Excellent. Pam in Altrincham. I think this has been quite a popular, the scone was a popular one, but uh, bread making, I think people have wanted a fresh loaf, um, and, and we're trying to do things that you can do quickly. This is all about recipes for lockdown, uh, using what you've got in the cupboards, um, and, and, and just trying to have a bit of fun with baking. I know I love a fresh bread loaf, um, but I often don't do it in time. I start with the yeast, I start proving it, and actually by the time it's ready, the kids have eaten something else, and I've lost the will. So, uh, so we're doing soda bread because it is quick and it's, it's great for um, a lockdown recipe today. Well, people saying well done to Max for the YouTube channel. Yeah, well done Max. <laughs> and people who've also recreated the scones for uh, VE Day yesterday. Yeah, you, you had scones didn't you yesterday? We all did yeah. actually. We made a lot. We made over 130 scones yesterday morning before 7.30 in the morning. Hence the uh, hurting the wrist. It's also Boozy Baker's birthday today. We've turned five. So uh, if you haven't already liked us uh, and want to follow us, then please do. We're going to try and reach 5,000 uh, if we can to celebrate our five years of being Boozy Bakers. Five, 1,000 for every year. Oh, uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Right, do you think we're ready to start? Have we got the numbers up? So if you haven't already washed your hands, we have. Uh, so if you want to go and wash your hands before, uh, because you're going to be putting, your, particularly you're going to be putting your hands in the bowl today, mm. so we'll give you a few minutes to do that. And anyone, because we do get um, some people asking, uh, the oven, you want to be setting that for uh, 180 or 160 fan. Uh, so if you want to put your ovens on now, it's 180 or 160 for a fan oven.
Yes. Is j- this is water, by the way, not gin and tonic. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> Certainly not yours. Yeah, lots of thumbs ups and lots of fir- first time viewers as well. Oh, excellent. That's really good to hear. And Laura made lavender scones yesterday, which was lovely. <laughs> I haven't tried that. We've got lavender. Should we try it? Lavender. 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 It's the. Um, it's the. It's not actually in flower yet, but it's just by the steps. We've got some. It's got the purple heads on it. Oh. We'll have a go. You need to have some lavender varnish. Use um, lavender brown from Harry Potter. Ah no. Right. Okay, are you needing something, Mr. Beasy Bakers? Well, Mr. Beasy Bakers is behind the camera as usual. Yeah, can you pass me my phone? Could you pass Daddy his phone, please? Thank you. I've got people asking for gas mark, and I forgot to write Sorry, it down. we didn't do gas mark. We're just finding it out for you now. It's often something that we forget. Right, come on then, Max. So, as I said, um, soda bread, it's no yeast, so there's no time that you need to wait with proving. This is a quick loaf. Uh, traditionally, it's made with buttermilk. Um, we didn't put buttermilk on the ingredients list because it was a fresh ingredient, um, and we thought, you know what, it's lockdown. We don't, we don't have buttermilk in. Um, we haven't been to the shops for a while, so we're going to do it ourselves by making it with milk and um, an acid like lemon juice. Or if you haven't got lemon juice, then it will be with a vinegar. So we are going to do that first because we want it to curdle. Um, so I'm going to take the bowl away and I'll replace it with uh, some milk. Now it's fine, whatever milk you have. Um, you can use uh, a long life or full milk, cream, yogurt. It doesn't really matter, um, but you need 285 ml of it. So whatever you have in front of you, 285 mil. Speak up a bit, Michelle. Okay, I will speak up. Sorry, you got that, Max? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So it's UHT uh, or full fat. Um, you can use a yogurt. You can use um, a dairy-free alternative. Uh, but you need 285 uh, milliliters uh, in a jug or something that will take a measurement in front of you before we add uh, uh, the acid to the mix. So, as usual, we've said, once you've got it ready, can you give us a thumbs up? Because once we see like a big surge of thumbs up, we know that you're all with us. And we've pre-measured all of our things, so we need to give you a bit of time uh, to join us. Right. Uh, we've got someone who's got buttermilk, so they don't, don't need to add the lemon? No, no, just butter. If you've got buttermilk, just use buttermilk. You don't need to do this process. You just need to hang back whilst we make ours. Uh, plant milk? Yeah. I think as long as it's liquid um, and it's, I, I'm pretty sure, as long as it's got to have lactose in it, hasn't it, to, to well, I think, Mr. Boozy Bakers is looking it up for you, but if it's a milk product, then I would imagine you'll be all right. You just want to have um, the reaction. And uh, can you use lime instead of lemon? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. White wine vinegar, um, cider vinegar, um, uh, Lime juice, lemon juice, it's just got to have some acid into it. Have we got some thumbs up? Or got lots of thumbs up. Um, just a, is it 285 ml of milk you are? 185. Oh, sorry, you are right. I am very sorry, it's 285. Bad, bad, Michelle. Yes, that is in the, your ingredients, so it's 285. Very sorry if I've said 185. 285 ml is what you need. Very sorry. Max, you're going to have to keep me going today. Give me a nudge when I make a mistake. Okay, are we good? And how much lemon? Uh, so I'm going to do, we're, we're using lemon juice. Max, can you find the big spoon over there? No, this is lemon juice. You can use lime. Can you find it? Just there. Just a big spoon. We're going to use um, a tablespoon. So Max is just getting ours. Thank you. So we're using a big spoon. Not a dessert one. One size bigger, the type you serve with. So we're going to put that, Max, you should be doing this actually. So I'm going to fill that spoon. I can, it's just you took the spoon. I know, I know. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do that. And then if you tip it in, what you should see 
I'm going to push this out so Max can show you. That's it, give it a stir, Max. What you'll see is it will start to curdle. It might happen, I've had it, but it happens quite instantly. And I made some yesterday and it didn't have, it was a little thicker, but I didn't need it long enough. Still got a great loaf. But give that a good stir. Can you see any changes, Max? So if you've got any kids doing this. It's getting a bit thicker. Yeah? If you've got any kids doing this, it's science that you're doing today. Um, and what, what we're doing is it's the lactic acids in the milk um, is uh, reacting with the, sorry, the lactic, it's not acids, is it? Yeah. It's alkaline in the milk, it's acids with the um, lemon juice. And what that does is create the buttermilk, that adds the moisture to the bread, and then when we add the bicarbonate later, um, that's where you have the reaction which creates carbon dioxide, am I right Mr. Booth Vegas? Yes, carbon dioxide bubbles. So instead of having the yeast, we're going to create the bubbles with the reaction that the bicarb and the buttermilk has. So is that getting thicker? A little bit. So check that was a tablespoon of. Uh, that was a tablespoon of lemon juice. As I said, if you've got a different, if you've got a vinegar instead, that's fine too. And thank you, Nikki. I've looked up as well, and yes, you can use plant-based milk. It's used in vegan soap. So Brilliant. Great. Thank you. We do try our best. To, if we don't know something, look it up. But um, uh, if we don't use it, sometimes we just don't know. Right. Okay. So we're going to leave that for a minute uh, because we want that to develop. Um, and then once we've got all our dry ingredients, we can add that. Can you just go back over the first bit for those who've just joined us? No food. problem at all. So you want to set your oven to 180 or fan oven 160 or gas mark 4. Um, and then we've added 285 ml. I did get that measurement wrong, so if you did wait out, just make sure it's 285 ml of milk. Um, and then we've done a tablespoon of lemon juice and we've mixed that together and that's going to be our substitute uh, buttermilk because buttermilk is soured milk and by adding the lemon juice that's what we're doing is we're going to sour it. Uh, we're asking questions about the thickening of it. Yeah. Some say it's not thick, is it because of the milk they've used? No, no, not at all. So I did it, I did it um, a good week ago and it thickened quite a lot. Um, as you can see from ours, it's still quite, it's, it's still very thin. It's ever so slightly. Um, who's phoning us? It's, right. Right. Um, uh, it's, it's just ever so slightly thicker at the moment. Now if that doesn't thicken, as long as you've got them both in, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But if it thickens, that's why and that's fine too. So just leave it to one side and then we'll come back to that and we'll just get, give it a chance to develop. Right then. Are we got some thumbs up? Are we all there? We'll wait for the thumbs up to come in. Feel free, by the way, when we're doing this, to do shout-outs. If you're virtually baking with relatives or friends, I know we do have some bake-offs going on, um, then uh, then please do... Um, do, do, do <laughs> sorry, Mr. Beauty Bakes is putting me off today. Um, uh, do do shout-outs. We we love to hear from you. Right. Okay. Next, we're going to add our plain flour. Max, do you want to get the plain flour? Sorry, love, I've been ignoring you a bit, haven't I? Uh, Kate yeah. used skim milk and creme fraiche with her, so... Okay, excellent. Right, Max, you can put that down for me? Yeah. Excellent. So, could you... This is plain flour, and it is 350 grams. So if you want to weigh out 350 grams, if you haven't got plain flour, you can use self-raising, you can use um, bread flour, you know, uh, whatever you have, really. Um, I think someone's asked us about coconut flour, that doesn't work as a straight up substitute. Uh, hopefully we've managed to get back to everyone that asked, not yet, we're just waiting for everyone to weigh out. So we've got shout outs for the Coxes and Stevens from the Good good Bounds? Good Hello. Bonds, sorry, Good Bonds. Uh, Amanda in Ashvale, first time soda bread. Hi Amanda. Hello to Caroline, my fellow baker pal in Milton Keynes from Lisa. Oh, are you both doing it today? We do like, by the way, when we've finished, to see your pictures. Hopefully you've seen the ones that we've posted. There's so many pizza uh, pictures come in, and I know we didn't put them all up. But when you've done your bread, do show us. We love it. Uh, Lisa asks, can break, bake the bread in her bread-making tea? Yeah, just... 
just careful of, it doesn't um, rise in the same way, why are we keeping you up sweetie? Uh, it doesn't rise in the same way um, as a normal bread loaf will, so you, you're going to want to, we'll, we'll go over that, but you're going to want to put a deep cut into it just so it cooks well, but if you have got a bread tin that you want to use, then, then go for it, we're just going to make a nice round loaf. Right, so to your flour, I've not sieved that, that is 350 grams of plain flour, we haven't bothered to sieve it, um, we are going to add one teaspoon of bicarbonate uh, soda. If you're using baking uh, powder, then uh, you're going to want a couple. Uh, bicarb is preferable, uh, but if you haven't got it, use a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. We've had a couple of questions about adding mixed seeds and yeah. blitzed oats and things like that. Uh, Daisy, for example added 25 grams. Yeah, that's fine. So um, we've got some rosemary on hand today, so I thought we'd change it up a bit with some of the rosemary. So um, add your baking soda. That's it, Max. So just get a teaspoon. Uh, but we will be we'll be giving you the kind of, if you want to add in anything, then do it now. Uh, but you definitely want to add your, any, any extras that you've got, you want to add it to your dry ingredients. And Kathleen's worried she had no reaction from the milk and vinegar. No, ours is still quite thin, don't worry. I mean, I said I made I made that loaf the other day um, and that was still quite thin. I didn't give it any time to react, but it's still in there. The, you've got all the um, ingredients. That's right, Max. That's all right. Do you want to add a tiny bit more because it wasn't quite a full? Just a tiny bit more. That's it. Perfect. Good teaspoon of bicarb. Um, asking about no um, bicarbonate soda. Or can you use self-raising flour? Self-raising flour won't be a problem. Um, you will need a raising agent for this, uh, for it to work uh, well. So if you've got um, baking powder, um, then use two to the bicarbonate. Um, does it have a, has a better reaction with the um, uh, acid that we're putting in with the lemon juice in the buttermilk? Um, and it's much stronger than baking powder. So put a couple of teaspoons of baking powder if you're using that. And uh, what temperature does the oven have to be at again, please? That's 180 or 160 for fan or gas mark 4. So once you've got your baking, um, sorry, your bicarbonate uh, in there, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. Could you, you've lost a teaspoon now, haven't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, still dry. Okay. Do you need to sift the flour? No, we haven't bothered. If you want to, you're welcome to. Don't do it any harm, but we, we just don't bother. We're will, lazy bakers. Really. Will it work with gluten-free flour? Um, yes, I think so. And can we add grated cheese? You can. So we're going to add at the moment. We're doing a teaspoon of salt. Um, I've seen a, that's fine. I've seen a lot of recipes that call for two teaspoons, even more actually. Um, I tried it with two teaspoons to begin with, and it was far too salty. Uh, so if you're a really big fan of salt, uh, then you might might want to put a bit more in. But I find with um, a plain flour, um, just t one teaspoon is su suffice, just a good teaspoon. Uh, Janice hasn't got scales, so weighing out your flour, most flour bags are one and a half kilos, so you want about a quarter of a bag of flour. How is it? I don't know. Uh. Daddy knows a lot of, about weights and things very quickly, so we leave that bit to him. Right, I've just given that a shake just to combine the ingredients a bit. So now we've got, so for in here, we've got 350 grams of our flour, we've got a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and we've got a teaspoon of salt. I'm not sure anyone can see that, Max, so if you're going to do that, you're going to have to put it right central, that's it. So that's, now if you want to add um, some herbs or um, oats or seeds, um, then you can do that now. Have we got a phone call coming in? Sorry if there's any buzzing. Right. And can you add dried fruit? Yes, you can. I think, um, and I didn't look it up in there, but I think currants and things were, were quite um, popular to put in. Right, we've got some rosemary I've just picked out from the garden. So Max, you're going to want to get um, a knife Ooh. and just gently rock the knife that way to cut. I don't know if anyone can see. So we've got a cutting board and we're just going to chop the rosemary in a kind of rocking motion. There we go Max, do you want to give that a bit of a chop? Just because we don't want massive pieces of rosemary. Shouldn't it be okay? Yes it is, yeah you're good. Probably a bit... That's alright. You could also
also have a, you might have a herb cutter that does the rocking. Are we all those there? No, that's a pestle and mortar. So we crush seeds with that sometimes, like fennel. Right, okay, would you like to put our rosemary in there, Max? That's it. Does it smell nice? Yeah. Yeah. We've got questions coming in. Uh, Jane has said she won't be able to get hold of bread flour and using chapati flour, which yeah, has worked well to make that, it more that will well. It's got, I think it's got a lot more gluten in chapati flour, so uh, that should work very well. And if you're using seeds, what quantity? Um, I would go 20 grams, 25 grams, kind of like a handful really. So if you haven't got scales, I'd go for a handful. Right. Has everyone with us? You might be grating cheese if you're doing cheese, so uh, we'll wait for a couple of thumbs up. Could you let us know if there's some thumbs up? So if anyone worrying about the reaction, I've got to say, our, our milk isn't looking much thicker today. I think some people have heated it before. I've got a lot of people asking about gram flour. It, I, I'm looking it up, as far as I'm concerned, I think it will work, okay. but I'm not 100% certain, so please give it a go and let us know. Have a go. Oh, we've got someone at the door. Bear with us, it's a DPD or something. <laughs> I don't think this is working. It's fine, it just it has that goes around. Can you give us a video? Oh, that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. For anyone asking questions, we've lost Mr. Boozy Baker's because someone's just delivered something to us. Just sit there, Sally. It's fine. And uh, we will be back with you in just a moment. Nothing like a live video. <laughs> Unfortunately, DPD do insist on having a picture of the person collecting the parcel. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they know you've got it, I suppose, although it'd be in one's feet. Right. Okay, so um, have we, are we on questions? Because I haven't been uh, Will poppy seeds work? Yeah, put them in. How would olives work? Yeah! Mm -hmm. Go for it. I like hearing what people are using. Oh, Max is onto the olives. That's a nice idea. Yeah, we like olive bread. Yeah? And how much cheese? Again, I'd probably go, um, I'd do about 25 grams inside your uh, loaf and then I'd reserve a little bit for the top later. And would you add the cheese now? Yeah. Yeah, Any anything you're going to add, I'd always put it into the dry ingredients um, and then give it a bit of a stir because it won't clump together if you're stirring it into the, the dry flour. The mini, it's the same with any fruit um, and cakes as well. If you're going to add anything, do it to the flour because the flour will coat around each piece, especially if it's a sticky substance you're putting in. Um, and then they, they won't clump together when you add the liquid. <laughs> you alright there, Max? <laughs> right, so we're going to add um, the buttermilk. As I said, don't worry um, if this hasn't thickened. Ours isn't particularly thick, but it's still in there. Are you ready, Max? So I'm going to reserve a little bit. I'm going to do it gradually, and I'm going to reserve a little bit of the milk because um, every flour reacts differently, and some absorb more than others. It's all right, don't worry, you're fine. No, it's, you're a little clumsy sometimes, <laughs> but you're doing fine. Um, so I'm just doing it gradually. And I'd rather, also, you'll find that you'll get a, a big ball of dough and then there'll be a bit in the bottom usually. So um, if it's a bit dry, we'll just use a bit of the milk to, uh, in the bottom of that. Um, Jacqueline keeps asking, is semi-skim milk okay? Yes, that's what we're using. Yeah, yeah no problem at all. And would garlic bagels <coughs> work? Garlic? Yeah, go for it. Whatever you like in your bread, really. I understand why your wrist hurts now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've done a lot of scones where I've put it in a big bowl and I've gathered it all up with my wrist and then I've been pressing them out and I've just hurt my wrist quite badly. So it's fine, it's just I'm trying to rest it up a bit. So I'm making Max do all the work. The hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and how much dried herbs have you had in herbs? Um, so we did um, probably a, a good teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons. Oh, sorry, am I not loud enough? Uh, so a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half, te two teaspoons, however herby you want it, really. Uh, what do we put in, Max? About one and a half teaspoons worth? 
We sprinkled it, but yeah. How are you doing? Want some more? Yes, please. You want to get a bit more in there? Okay. One more, please. So how are we doing, everyone? So what you want to be doing is this is going to be your loaf, basically. So we want it to be in a dough. Uh, we don't want it too floury and we don't want it too sticky. If you find, if you've tipped all your milk in and you've given it a, a, a big stir um, and you've got a sticky mess, you're going to want to add um, a dessert spoon of flour. Just keep adding just a spoon of flour in uh, bit by bit until you've got it at a nice soft consistency. If it's too uh, dry, you're not going to get the same um, moisture in your bread. So you want to get a good, um, a, a nice soft spun, uh, soft dough without it being sticky. We're going to put our hands in in a minute, um, but whilst it's really sticky, we're, we're using a spoon. Uh, we're getting a lot of people who told us the sound is fine. We've had a couple who are struggling though, so please just have a look and check your um, sound is on. You all right? A little bit more? Mm. We're just adding a little bit more milk. The other thing you can do, sorry Max, is just, I'll show you what ours looks like, is um, I'm just touching and I can feel the moisture um, in this. Um, so we, I'm not going to add that little extra bit of milk until Max has given that even more of a stir. Mr. Boozy Babies is laughing at me. <laughs> no, it's me. Just so, so if your sound's not working, please turn it on. I'm not going to hear you, are they? <laughs> <laughs> right, Max. I think you've probably got to a point that you need to use your hands. So I'm just going to scrape the spoon down so we don't use that mixture, lose that mixture. Can you see me all right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just scraping that off. And then Max, who's washed his hands already, is going to get them a little dirty now. But that's fine, it's all a bit of fun. And Max, what you need to do is you need to kind of press down and you want to pick up all that loose flour in the bottom of your bowl. One hand or two hands? Whatever you want, darling. I'd start with one hand, yeah. because whilst it's a bit stickier, and then I'd... <laughs> <laughs> Max doesn't like particularly the feeling of stickiness on his hands there, but you'll be fine. You'll be good. Go on then. Those watching from YouTube, one like my hands to be fixed. You're going to have to speak up for people to hear you for that normal. Yeah. Right, that's it. So Max is just pushing down on the flour and he's picking up all the loose bits of um, flour in the bottom of the bowl. And I'm just going to test, but that is still quite um, wet feeling. So I'm not going to add that last bit of milk until I'm completely sure he doesn't need it. You are right. I hate this. I think that find it quite therapeutic. It's nice. So who have we got baking in terms of kids? Have we got some more kids joining us? I've heard a few earlier. But if you've got um, uh, a child baking with you, we'd like to hear their name and how old they are. That's it, Max. Can you feel it more coming together now? Yeah. This does take a while. Um, so, so give yourself a chance. You alright? Can I have a feel? Yeah. So yeah, I can I can feel the moisture, but I can pick that up, and my hands aren't getting sticky. Max has <laughs> Max has done all the hard work. <laughs> Why would you say that? Right, in front of me? <laughs> right. So now we've got it in a bowl. I'm going to remove the bowl because we don't need that now. There's a bit of flour that Max actually has tipped out, but if you need a bit of flour on your surface, put a tiny bit down, not masses, because we don't want to add loads of flour. And I'm just going to gently, very gently, knead that um, to a nice smooth surface. But you can see it's not really sticking to the surface here. Have we got any questions? Um, when will this be a safe video? Sadly, missed most of the broadcast. Have problems connecting? Um, the minute it's finished. Uh, we, we put it as saved. It takes a while to download on Facebook, um, but it will just become up on a, it will come up as a, a saved post. Um, and, and then Max will download it to YouTube. So if you head over to the, and type in Boozy Bakers to YouTube, um, you'll find the rest of our workshops on there, uh, which we've found is quite a convenient place to put them. 
um, and we're going to store them on there and we're probably going to add a few um, just for YouTube bits and bobs when Max has worked out how to edit a bit and you're going to do some just for YouTube aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So we've got Kira, age 10 with us. Hi Kira, well done. William in the New Forest, he's 15. Well done William. We've got Amelia and Alice, 14 and 12 from West Sussex. Excellent. Susie's got a toddler who's two and a five-year-old oh, with us. Better than Play-Doh, you get to eat it afterwards. Sarah would be baking, but her nine-month-old is sleeping on her. Oh, enjoy. So, um, once you've done this, of course, you can experiment with all your um, uh, different... Um, well, you don't have to put any kind of flavours in, but you can choose different varieties. And you can bake this for your parents every day. Right, so we've got um, a, a baking tray, just a regular baking tray. We've just put a bit of um, baker, parchment paper on ours. You don't need to. Um, I just have a real distrust of baking trays. Um, and I like to make sure that it's not going to stick. But um, what we will do as well, I'm actually picking all of that off. It's driving you mad, isn't it? Um, is I'm going to just add a little bit of um, plain flour just and sprinkle it on the tray. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to put a little bit, either put it on directly on the tray or put it on um, your uh, parchment or baking paper uh, just to avoid it sticking. Do use my left hand. Are people with us? Are yeah, we... Elspeth's very happy that so hardly any kneading required, even better. No, that's the thing. Because because with a uh, normal loaf, you're having to um, bring all the glutens out, and, and there's, it's just a lot more work. This isn't. This is a, I want some bread for lunch. And you, sh you should, um, once you've got the hang of it, you should be able to do it within 40, 50 minutes. So, um, so I've, all I've got is my round of dough on my baking sheet. And what we're going to do next, Max, you can do this, is I'm going to put a deep cross into my bread. And the reason I'm really deep cross with it, because this is going um, to help our dough cook all the way through. Let me put that over there, Max. Right. Okay. Right. I'm going to trust you, Max, to hold this nicely. Can you do me um, a cross all the way across and all the way that way? Um, but you can go deep with it. Really cut into it. You might want to slice it, so that's it, yeah, yeah? Um, move it around that way so you can do it again, and then start there, whoop, <laughs> so just a nice big score in it, and it will come apart a bit, and that's fine, you want that, you'll find that it will rise and that that score will become uh, quite faint. So that's our bread, if you can see it. Can you see that, Rich? Yeah. Yeah. And then all we're going to do is we're going, uh, I'm going to put a bit of flour on top of that as well, actually, Max, sorry. If you've got cheese or you've got some um, seeds or anything now, um, you can put them on top. Max, do you want to put any rosemary on top? Any couple of sprigs on top of that? Yeah? Do you want to just, you could pick some off, couldn't you? Like, Tom's there. baking with his four-year-old. He's a dog. <laughs> Is he good? <laughs> He'd be good at eating and, it. And Emma's joining on FaceTime with her best friend Lisa and her daughter Isla. Oh, excellent. That's it, Max. You can decorate a bit. Helen said her mum used to say the cross was to let the devil out of the cake. Oh. Is your mum Irish? I'd like to know that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you can smell that, Max. It smells lovely. Uh, can you use whole milk? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, a lot of soda uh, bread is is made with whole meal. And I, from looking up about soda bread before we did this, um, a lot of people like, use loads of salt because um, the white flour doesn't have as much flavour as a whole meal bread, um, a whole meal flour wheel. Um, I, I've got to say, I'm sure they're right, but uh, the amount of salt that we first put in was just horrible. So we did reduce it to one teaspoon. Well done, that looks really nice. 
Uh, Emma says she's got quite a lot of milk left, about 100 mil, but mm. her mixture is completely combined. Any problems to come, do you think? Uh, pick it up and, and see, is it, if it's not really dry, I mean, this is quite soft to the touch, so you, you want that softness. If you can put a bit more milk, if you started, I don't know if you had a different flour, and different flours do absorb but uh, differently, but... Uh, if you could add a bit more milk, I would, because you want that moisture to your bread. Um, but if it's if you if that's going to risk becoming sticky, then no, no, you've got it combined at the right amount. And Hannah's nanny is Irish and bakes soda bread all the time. Ah. So. <laughs> um, we've got Alan with us, who's a first-time baker, age fifty-four. Excellent. Or your pom pom? What's he been baking recently? Because he's watching. What's he been making? Cakes. Lemon drizzle cakes for the first time. So no, there's no there's no kind of bad time to start with baking really. Uh, Trace asked, should you put marmite on top? Uh, you're baking it for about thirty to thirty five minutes. I'm not sure how brown the marmite will get. You can try it. Uh, you might get it might have a deeper crust. I'm not sure to be honest. I don't know if that might burn. Uh, that would be my only concern, um, but try it. Uh, Lisa's missed a bit. Um, how long kneading? Uh, we didn't really. We just combined it, and I just kneaded it enough that we had a nice smooth ball. Um, so that, that's it. That's all we need to do. Um, so, um, as I said, this is the loaf we did the other day, and you can see you've got... I mean, it looks like bread, doesn't it? I mean, this is a bit harder now. Soda bread doesn't last that long. Um, it's not like um, a shop bought loaf or a yeast loaf. This is a real uh, make it and eat it. You have no choice but to eat bread. Um, so I know it's an <laughs> awful situation. Um, so yeah, you will be fine. Um, what else do we want to ask? Basically, once you've finished, once you've got a loaf like this, we're going to pop them in the oven uh, for 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and you can eat it as soon as it's cooled down. What I would say is give it a few minutes on the tray when it comes out um, and then put it onto a rack. What you don't want to do, and I've done this twice this week, much to my annoyance, is I've forgotten about it and I've left it on the sheet and you end up with a slight um, damp, dampness to the bottom where the air's got trapped between the, the, the tray and the bread and it just feels a little bit um, too much moisture on the bottom. So once once you can pick it up, I put it on um, a rack to cool down. You're right, Max. Can you freeze it? I don't know. I can't imagine why not. Um, but because we're not doing too big a loaf, and because it doesn't take too long, I would I would say um, I just eat it. Um, but you may be able to. I can't. I can't why not, but Mr. Breezy Bakers is looking this up for you. The other thing we want to ask, so Max, do you want to go and put that in the oven actually, sweetheart? Yep. Well done. Yeah, people are ready to put those in. So yep. what temperature? So 180 or 160 for fan, um, or guess mark four. One thing we would like to know, because uh, we normally are online for a good hour um, chatting with you guys and baking, and this takes a bit less time, but we'd like to know what you want for next week. Um, we, we're trying to come up with some ideas, um, whether to keep it nice and simple or whether you want a bit more of a technical challenge, um, whether you want sweet or savoury, um, we've thought about profiteroles rolls uh, or quiche, uh, cheesecakes, no-bake cheesecakes, um, so we need to hear from you. Uh, do you brush top with milk? I haven't, um, but you can, yeah. I mean, we do that with our scones as well, so it will give it um, a bit of a glaze, and I think it will soften the top. How long to cook for? Uh, 30 to 35 minutes. And the answer to freezing it, yes, you can. It will last up to three months in the freezer. There you go. So you probably want to wrap it in some cling film. Um, but well done. Um, so the man behind the camera knows everything. Uh, so if you have any ideas, um, then yeah, in the comments or message us, um, we want things, sorry, I think I've got some flour, just let me see my nose. Um, we want some ideas that uh, you would like to do, and anything that we can fit within like 40 to 50 minutes, uh, we're going to have a go at next week. 
everything that's come in. <laughs> We've had cheesecake, raffita rolls, uh, cinnamon buns. Oh yeah, we could do cinnamon buns, couldn't we? Oh. Although there's yeast, uh, there's, there might be some rising to that, so I'll have a look. Quiche, yeah. Sausage rolls. Yeah. What do you want to do? Flapjacks. Donuts. No rice donuts, we could do that. It might be a bit similar to, to this though. Maybe another week though, we could do donuts. You can go and wash your hands. It's driving him crazy, he can't cope. So yeah, um, we will have a thing um, tonight, tomorrow, and we'll put up a new um, event for next week. We're going to keep doing these. Um, Cinnamon bun and cheesecake seem quite Cinnamon popular. Cinnamon buns and cheesecake. So we've got a sweet, we need to do sweet then. We've had shortbread, flatbread. Okay. Yeah, Lots sure. of ideas for the next few weeks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll try and put up a couple so you know what's happening. We're quite happy to do these. Obviously, we've done these during lockdown. If this is something you would like us to do after lockdown, just let us know. Um, obviously, you're all going to get busier when we're all free to do our thing. Um, but, um, but if you like following us, uh, just give us um, a yeah, follow along and uh, we'll come up with some more. Uh, we were a bit ahead. We were quite organised last week, and uh, we, we came up with a couple of weeks' worth. But um, we've been a bit busy with VE Day and scones and cream teas. You got some more questions? Uh, someone missed the beginning. They said, "Do they have to use bread flour?" Uh, so we use plain flour, uh, but you can use bread flour, wholemeal, um, self-raising if that's all you've got. What we try to do with all these um, workshops is to make it as versatile as possible so you're not making a special trip out. Um, we've tried to avoid using the yeast, A, because it takes longer and I do like doing things that are quick and easy um, and, and also because people aren't getting hold of that. Yeah, anything with cinnamon's coming in. There's also a lot of love for Max. Ah, Max, <laughs> you're doing well. Well, if, if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel, it is Max running this because I haven't got a clue and he's taught himself how to upload the videos, yeah. which isn't as simple as you might think. Um, and um, and he's, he's learning about all oh, the description in, he's putting your ingredients lists on the descriptions on YouTube. So you, like this, you can um, go on, find the ingredients beforehand and then watch along. Um, you need to you need to speak up a bit so they can hear you. I think we're at like fifty subscribers. Now. Fifty subscribers. He's very happy about that. Mm -hmm. So you can make his day by going and uh, following and subscribing to his YouTube channel. And then maybe we'll get a hundred. <laughs> so Max is uh, he wants to edit. That's the next task is to learn to edit. And then you're going to come into the kitchen, aren't you? And I'm going to do some technique bits, and then he's going to edit that and put those films directly onto YouTube. Um, any tips to know when it's actually cooked? Uh, so it's going to be the colour, uh, we'll probably give it away mostly, it's going to be a nice golden brown. Uh, so you can see from the very pale um, uh, loaf that we had, mine's actually turned a really nice, it's a bit flowery now, but um, a really nice golden brown. Um, it should also, if you tip it up uh, and then a knock on the bottom of it, there's a bit of a hollow sound. It shouldn't be too, it shouldn't be too heavy and doughy. Um, so uh, those are good signs, uh, but we've made this loaf a number of times. You just want to eat, don't you? I just want to eat it. Max just eats everything. So have we got any more questions? And do send us your pictures, we want to see them. If you've done any intricate designs or uh, yeah, your flavours, we'd love to know what you used and see pictures. Uh, if you're happy for us to post a picture of you in it, uh, then let us know that you're happy for us to use it and we do put a nice collage of all your bakes um, and uh, we do love seeing that, it makes our Sundays. <laughs> yeah, lots of people saying they're going to subscribe to YouTube. There you Yay! go, <laughs> uh, Is there any risk with regard to the dough being a bit too sticky? If you've, if you've got a sticky dough, put a bit more flour into it um, and just knead that flour in. Um, I, I, the loaf that I made yesterday was slightly too sticky, um, and if anything, um, it's, it's, it was quite moist to eat, but it was still fine, it, it didn't have a massive effect on it. So if you can put it into a ball, uh, and, it's, and you can form a ball with it, I'm sure you're fine, but if you're unsure, just put a little bit more flour into it. The good thing with this bread is having no yeast in it, 
it doesn't make it harmful if it's no no it's, it's, it is it's um it is a, lo a low risk um bread that you're making in terms of no yeast in it you want to eat the bread you can eat the bread yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anyone else is a 10 year old boy i don't know if yours is like uh walking yeah. rooms like pac-man of uh, eating food uh like mine is is that good max you like that? People have taken notes and will be baking in the next few days, and they've already subscribed as well. So excellent! <laughs> wow, happy boy. <laughs> so well, that's yeah. like, it, it is from us. Um, yeah, give your loaves um, a good thirty to thirty-five minutes. I always find that when something's done, you'll smell that it's done first of all. Uh, take a look at it. It should be golden brown to the touch. Uh, if it if they tick both those boxes, then bring it out. And without burning yourself, turn it round and give it a little knock. It should feel quite hollow. What's uh, that? Susie said, if it's too sticky, it means your toddler gets stuck in it and tries to lick it off her hands. <laughs> 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 There's quite a few people who are making bread for the first time. We're getting more calls for profiteroles. Profiteroles. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say, it's a firm favourite of Mr. Busy Baker's. Uh, I know there is a little bit of resting time with uh, profiteroles normally. Um, and you will need to be on a hob, which is no problem for you guys, uh, but we're going to have to get the camping equipment out so we can do it. Um, but I am going to have a look, because I'm thinking profiteroles would be a bit of fun, really. Um, and then you can get really technical, because those of you that are feeling uh, like you want to challenge, you could make a croque and bouche. Um, and we'd like to see your towers of profiteroles then. Um, we'll have to make one in advance, won't we? What, a croque and bouche? A croque and bouche. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boozy will be because we'll have to eat it. Okay, well we'll work we'll work on that. I'll come up with some ideas that we can do within the, the time frame uh, without too much waiting around. And uh, we'll put up some new workshops uh, for the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Oh, I think that's it. Is there any more questions or are we good? Uh, I think we're Everyone good. Everyone's a loaf in the oven? Please, everyone, do send us your pictures again, as you have been doing each week, so we can uh, put a collage together online. Yeah, we love this. Uh, we, honestly, we, we look forward to this so much each week, don't we? It's, uh, it's, oh, it's like the VE day. We had all of our time with our neighbours uh, from a distance, um, and it was really lovely. And we, we, we miss spending time with you. I did actually think we ought to do like a virtual event, that we have a stall <laughs> of all our cakes, but... Um, but you do miss seeing people, so this is a really lovely way of spending some time with you. So thank you for joining us. Uh, as I said, we will put, we will save the video so you can go back to it, or you can go over to YouTube and all of our workshops are on there. Um, have fun, hopefully your loaf will come out um, soon and uh, you can enjoy that. Just give it a few minutes just to um, get, so it's not so hot. Uh, slice it up, enjoy it with a chunk of cheese or something. Enjoy this lovely weather. Hopefully you can be outside enjoying your bread. And uh, tell us what you thought um, and show us your pictures. Right, that's it for us, isn't it? Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>